nice to meet you. I appreciate you taking your time out of your schedule um, for being oh, here. Not at all. I um, have had, when I was in the UK, I used to um, uh, commit a lot of my time to um, Next Generation. And then when I moved to Atlanta, um, I, I continued that. For the last two years, I've been in San Francisco. And um, it's just been really, really busy. And I haven't yet um, been able to do my bit for next gen but uh, so this is the start of what i hope is going to be a lot more things where i'm helping um young college kids just kind of be um inspired about their own potential future yeah and i think it's important how was your australia trip trip i remember you were um basically a couple it months was ago. incredible i got to do something that so few people do uh, and that's because of the strength of the leadership team down in um uh, Australia. Uh, they picked me up from the airport. We went to the Sydney Opera House and um, they got me to climb to the very, very top of the Sydney Opera House. Um, and the last person to do that was Hugh Jackman when he broke his shoulder uh, uh, for the Opera Winfrey show. So I was very, 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 very excited to be there. Uh, the business for Airbnb in Australia is just incredible. It's really strong. Uh, and the team are beautiful, and I spent 13 days in Sydney, and I've never been to Sydney for as long a period as that. Yeah, and it really proves the power of like community. Like it's all about Airbnb's community, and when you know when lots of people start using Airbnb, the more people like an exponential effect. That's totally right. Yeah, totally. We've now got 2.3 million homes on the platform. Um, when I got here, we had 450,000. So. <clears throat> And we've now got uh, 80 million um, uh, guests on the platform. Uh, and when I got here, we had uh, 22 million guests on the platform. So the growth is just phenomenal and testament to the community and the service that the community gives. Yeah, it's really amazing. So hello, my name is Tej Singh and I'm broadcasting from New Jersey on behalf of Stanford Online High School students from across the globe. So hello world. With us here today is Mr. Jonathan Mildenhall. He's the Chief Marketing Officer at Airbnb. And I'm glad to have you here. It's truly a pleasure speaking to you. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here um, and connect with your OK, so uh, our first question is, what, what are some exciting moments you've had at Airbnb? It's, it's as a young company, it started as off as a young company, but it, now it's huge and it's changing the entire industry. I've, Seen that you've worked with the great brands like uh, KLM Airlines, American Express. I even saw the Huff Ariana Huffington uh, promo that you're doing. So it looks like you're doing some exciting stuff. Uh, what can you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, uh, I've been at the company for two years, uh, and a year ago we launched our first ever multinational advertising campaign. Uh, so that was um, a, a big moment for us because we'd never lent into advertising like that but the impact on that commercial, Never a Stranger, was phenomenal. And then at the end of last year, we took uh, 6,000 people to Paris, including 5,500 hosts. It was our biggest host convention. Um, and uh, the experience that we had in Paris was um, very, very memorable, um, given that it was such a, a fantastic um, time to bring the community together. Unfortunately, it, it happened during the week of the terrorist attacks. So it all ended in a very tragic way. Um, but everybody in our community was um, uh, uh, kept from harm's way. So grateful for that. And then um, coming into this year, uh, our biggest moment so far this year was, of course, having Beyonce uh, stay at uh, Airbnb during the Super Bowl weekend. That was another big, big moment for us. Yeah, I saw the Never Stranger ad. Wasn't that the uh, one where like a woman travels the world? And um, it, it was truly uh, breathtaking how you know you can do it through Airbnb. Wouldn't have been possible. So relating to that, uh, like since Airbnb, um, it has, it's taking on an industry. What is a big challenge uh, of your job? Whether it be just long term or even day to day, because lots of people refer to the company as a super brand. So it must be hard to keep pushing the brand higher and higher. Hmm. Well, it's, I'm very grateful that people do refer to Airbnb as a super brand. Um, we're not yet a super brand. Uh, we're not yet really um, taking the same share of mind as brands like Nike and Adidas and Coca-Cola 
and uh, Apple. And so we've got a long way to go before we're truly a global super brand, um, uh, but that certainly is the ambition. Um, but I think the um, biggest uh, challenge that uh, we have is really still building awareness. When you look around the world, I've still got less than 50% um, aided awareness. That means that less than 50% of our target audience, when shown a list of brands that include Airbnb, actually are able to say that they understand and know what Airbnb is all about. So um, from a marketing perspective, the biggest challenge for the next couple of years will be driving awareness that will ultimately lead to people considering to choose Airbnb. Yeah, it's a challenge lots of um, or startups or even big brands have. So now let's now that we've gotten those questions out of the way, let's move to the fun segment. Everyone likes this. So mm -hmm. what was your high school experience like? Do you have any interesting stories that you can motivate the current generation to work hard? Like how did you get started in this field, et cetera? So um, uh, my um, high school days are full of very, very fond memories. Um, but I, I had a dual personality because in the classroom, I would sit at the front of the class um, with the more academically minded um, students. And then in the break times, I'd be around the back of the bag sheds, you know, smoking a fag, hanging out with um, uh, the more kind of rebellious students. And both groups kind of didn't understand each other. And they were like, Jonathan, why do you hang out with the people at the front of the class? Or why do you hang out with the people behind the bike sheds? Um, uh, but I have always, always been fascinated by people and different people. And I always look for people that are slightly different to me um, because I, that's when I can get the maximum learning out of a particular experience. Um, and so even now, I like in the workplace to surround myself by people that are very, very different, different to one another and different to me. Uh, and I kind of learned that the benefit of um, having diverse company and diverse mindsets around you um, as a teenage student. But I really did enjoy my uh, college days uh, and I kind of miss the camaraderie that comes with uh, academic study. So speaking of the workplace, do you, do you have any perks of being uh, working at just Airbnb in general or even at a high position? And do you like, do you get free? I've heard that you get coupons or vouchers, all employees. So is there any benefits to working at Airbnb for, you know, teens when they grow up one day? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, working at a company like Airbnb is full of amazing benefits. Um, and working in a tech company in San Francisco, the benefits are incredible. Let me give you a couple of examples. Um, so I get to choose from one of the world's greatest kitchens for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The food at Airbnb is awesome. Uh, I get to work in what has been recognized as one of the world's most creatively dynamic um, office spaces. Um, and the office spaces here have been designed by an in-house architectural team, which is really cool. Um, uh, uh, but they just create such a stimulating and social work environment. Um, and then, as you say, I get to uh, spend uh, my travel vouchers on a quarterly basis. We get $500 a month. Uh, so $2,000 a year, which I can just spend on traveling on Airbnb so that I never really lose sight of what the product looks like and what the host community feels like. Um, but then on top of that, I just get to work with the most amazing group of people all over the world. Uh, we've got 2,300 um, people all over the world. And they're in so many different disciplines from engineering to customer service to community management to creativity. Um, and so once again, um, I'm working for a company that um, uh, has got such a diverse range of human talent in it that each and every day is just incredibly stimulating. Yeah, I can only imagine. So if you could spend a day with any person living today, uh, other than someone from your family, who would it be? You know, I'm torn um, because really there are always two people that um, uh, spring to mind. The first is um, uh, President Obama. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to the White House last week. Uh, I was a representative of the US, uh, US Ad Council at the White House. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet um, POTUS, but I did get to spend some time with Vice President Biden, uh, and that was an amazing experience. He's such a, an incredibly, incredibly charismatic and thoughtful 
and uh, wonderful human being. Um, uh, but then the other person, and this is because I'm just a child of the 90s, uh, um, uh, is Madonna. I would love to hang out with Madonna um, uh, uh, for probably a night out in the clubs rather than having dinner. So this might have answered the next question, but what's one thing, uh, the most exciting thing in your bucket list? Most exciting thing of my bucket list is um, possibly to become a father. I'm not yet a father, but uh, I'm hoping in the not too distant future uh, that I will get to experience the joy of parenthood. Interesting answer, yeah. So it's a tradition of Pixel Talk to end these interviews with a short, uh, lighthearted segment called This or That. It's a game. Do you want to play? Yeah, I'd love to play. OK, so Taylor Swift or Kanye West? Taylor. If you could be the CEO of any company other than Airbnb. Ooh, Disney. Three places um, you want to visit. I mean, this is maybe a hard question since you've visited so many being uh, working at Airbnb. <laughs> Three places I want to visit. The first place, undoubtedly, is my mom's kitchen. The second place is Brazil. I just love Brazil. Uh, I really. Are you going, are you going uh, to the Olympics in uh, uh, this year? I'm. I'm not sure yet. I've been to Brazil lots and lots of times. I spent about um, uh, overall six, seven months in Brazil, um, but I'm not sure that I'm going for the Olympics. Um, uh, we're still figuring that out. Um, but I do love spending time in Brazil. And then, I guess my third place would be. San Francisco, here in San Francisco. I've been living here for two years, and it's uh, now the place that I would definitely call um, my home. OK, so the next one is, would you rather have one wish granted today or three in 10 years? One today. Would you rather stop time or fly? Ooh, fly. Online shopping or shopping in a store? Oh, shopping in a store. I love walking around stores and picking up things and smelling things and touching fabrics and stuff. Facebook or Twitter? Ooh, I'm most active on Twitter. Early bird or night owl? Definitely early. I get up every day at 5.15. Wow. And our last question. Would you rather be able to read everyone's mind all the time or know their future? <laughs> These are great questions. Read their mind. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting answer. So we'd like to thank Mr. Mildenhall for graciously sparing his time for us here at Pixel Talk and inspiring not only the Stanford OHS community, but youth around the country and perhaps even around the world. Well, thank you very much. And uh, any time that I can lean into a youthful community like the one that you represent, uh, it gives me a, an incredible thrill because uh, I do get very, very excited when I think about the future of the next generation. So thank you.